Welcome to Good Catholic Great Stories, where we explore fascinating stories from and for the world of Catholicism. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Good Catholic Great Stories. I'm your host, Peter, and today we're very happy to be here with my friend, Travis Moran. Welcome, Travis. How's it going, everybody? Glad to be here, Peter. So Travis Moran is the founder and chairman of Crossroads for Christ, a nonprofit apostolate centered around forming intentional communities of young adult missionary disciples centered on the Eucharist. Crossroads for Christ began as a small community in Columbia, Connecticut, but has now grown into a flourishing ministry with chapters in five cities. Crossroads is answering the Holy Father's call to be active evangelizers, sharing the joy of the gospel with those who need it. Now, Travis, your story in this community is obviously very close to, to my heart, um, having experienced it at least only a little bit firsthand, um, but also having known so many people and having so many friends uh, as part of this ministry. Um, so first, right off the bat, for our listeners, tell us a story. You know, uh, how did you guys get started? Um, you know, how, did, how did God start this ministry? Sure, Peter. Yeah, happy to answer that. Um, it's something I, I go back to often, just seeing what the Lord has done over these years. Pretty incredible. This October will actually be our, our fifth year wow. um, since we started. So it's it's been incredible. When Crosses for, for Christ first began, it was kind of out of a place of, um, of just kind of real prayer um, to the Lord. Myself and my best friends, Alex, were just, we were, were praying to God. We had an amazing experience in the college we went to at Quinnipiac here in Connecticut of campus ministry. We had a vibrant community. We were seeking after the Lord together. We had graduated, and there was really very little in in our area in Connecticut in the way of young adult community. Mm -hmm. And we were really seeking to go deeper with Christ and with with others. Uh, but there really wasn't an opportunity to do that. And it happened that him and I went down to see Pope Francis during the, his papal visit here in fall 2015. Right. This is for the yeah, in Philly, right? With, uh, yeah, in yeah. Philly. Yep. We were on a bus ride there with with a lot of other young adults all around New England. And during that ride down, we were so moved by the Holy Spirit and just just felt so fulfilled and just desired to continue this adventure in Christ with other young adults. And so Alex and I were talking, we were praying, and the Lord put it on both of our hearts to start something ourselves. And we really felt the Lord say, like, I've given you everything that you need, and I want you to start something. And so we, we said yes, and we got back that next week. And that Thursday night, we decided to kind of text some of our friends in the area to get together and then to go pray a holy hour. And that was October 1st, 2015. That was four people, including Alex and myself. <laughs> and from there, we've just grown kind of exponentially. And I think what's so beautiful is the desire in the very beginning has been the consistent thread all the way through. And that's been to encounter Christ in the Eucharist and in one another. And we would that's what we would do every week. We would get together for an hour. Mm -hmm. We'd share fellowship, faith formation, where we're at in our lives. Right. And we'd go pray a holy hour. And, and slowly but surely, we start to just desire to share life together in a more full context, not just in that one night, mm -hmm. and to really encourage each other in our faith journey. And it's just been amazing to see the community grow. That's absolutely beautiful. So aside from this community, which obviously is growing and, and now is becoming this full-fledged apostolate, um, like what have some of the, the fruits been from that, just from that first step? Yeah, yeah. So when, so when we started, we had no idea kind of where it would go. Mm -hmm. We just knew that we wanted to get together every week um, to put, to give and to receive this blessing we, that was happening. And mm -hmm. uh, we didn't know what the Lord would do with it. But over time, it was clear that um, he just had his hand over it and it was inviting just more people to be a part of this grace. And I think now looking back, you know, seeing some of the fruit um, it has never been really about uh, numbers or anything. It's mm -hmm. been at least, uh, yeah, for all of us in leadership, it's been seeing the very real lives of people just be changed in a, in a, in a powerful way. So in a very slow way, mm -hmm. some examples I think of are um, a few conversions. We've had people come back to the church um, and some go through the RCA program and, and really enter in. And uh, those have been very joyful moments. Uh, we've had people who've been suffering with, with mental health issues mm -hmm. uh, like depression and anxiety. Um, and even just some with just really significant um, loneliness is a big big deal for a lot of young adults. Yeah. Um, it's a heavy cross. 
And so seeing people really be, be kind of lifted of that burden as the Lord has met them in community. Uh, one of my favorite uh, stories is um, a young man who over the course of years, it took a long time, but in the beginning was really struggling a lot with his prayer life, very resistant. He had a lot of wounds, but to see the Lord, like through his tenderness, really heal this man. And a big part of that was gathering regularly with other young adults to just love on him and encourage him in his prayer life. And it took years, but he's now at a place where he's praying the rosary every day and he's sharing that with other people. So you've got to pray the rosary, like just these, these transformations that it's the slow growth, the seed that, that grows, the mustard seed. And it's really beautiful to see that. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful to hear. It's, it's funny to hear your, um, just that quick experience about how you had this great experience in college, right? You had campus ministry. And then when you got out of college, it felt like there was nothing there. Um, yeah. you know, it, it, I've immediately, I can think of dozens of, of people I've known, friends of mine, um, who you know, have struggled to get involved in parishes, you know, have struggled to find that community. And I think what you're speaking to, and especially with the loneliness and the anxieties and, and all of those uh, things that are in some ways particular to just, I think our present day, just on our, our present moment, um, I think I can just think of so many people I know who've had that same experience and, and could really use something like this. So I think you guys are really kind of filling need there. And that's, it's beautiful to hear. Now I want to ask more about the thing you said with the Eucharistic focus, right? You say you started just with a holy hour one night and then you've yeah. continued that, that it's been a consistent thread. Um, can you just speak a little bit more to that and the power of that? Yeah, totally. Um, so we, in the very beginning, we were, we were praying about <clears throat> what the Lord was desiring of the group. And what we, what we didn't want was we didn't want something that was just intellectual mm -hmm. that you would come and you'd learn and then you'd leave. And we didn't just want it to be a social gathering either, where it was just for the sake of fellowship. We really wanted it to be about Christ and, and our uh, developing relationship with him and through that with one another. And <clears throat> we wanted, um, yeah, we, we desired that and we prayed about it. And the Lord kind of gave us this word that um, he blesses all avenues that, that go to the Eucharist. And we realized pretty quickly on that, that this was going to be our one thing. We were going to do Eucharistic adoration every time that we gathered. It wasn't going to be one of many. This was going to be it. And we really felt the Lord encourage us to say, like, really kind of putting him first that way, he would change our hearts in our prayer and in our relationships with the others in the group and those in our lives and like really create that change, which you know, I think we see in, in, in when we have a, a, a life that's really centered on the Eucharist. And, mm -hmm. and so we felt like, you know, take the Lord at his word and, and let's al like allow this to be central to who we are. And now looking back, it's just like amazing. Like that's, we truly believe that's, that's the heart of what Crosses for Christ is, is mm -hmm. allowing young adults to really encounter Christ in the Eucharist in a real meaningful way with other friends, with other young adults who can encourage them in that process. Cause it can be you know, really hard to kind yeah. of enter into that, that space of prayer. So, um, yeah, the Eucharist is, is kind of primary to who we are. And then through that, the friendships and the evangelization, evangelization just flows. That's, that's phenomenal. I mean, it's, I love that you're just putting our Lord right at the center because that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. Um, so where, where's Crossroads for Christ at sort of right now? Cause you started as this a uh, group of friends who were praying together, who, you know, doing all the hours together. How did it evolve and what is it today for our listeners? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Peter. Yeah. There was kind of a, a tipping point that we had hit a couple of years in where it was myself and, and just people who become some of my best friends. We've kind of journeyed on this together and, and done this mission together for a few years. And we would, we'd, we were getting together as a leadership team several mm -hmm. times a month as well. And it was becoming more and more of like this, this full-time job that all of us were still working and we're discerning our vocations. We're moving right. forward in life. And kind of this tipping point of, you know, was this going to end with this one chapter in Columbia that we would meet at my dad's physical therapy practice after hours <laughs> and then go pray the holy hour, you know, was it going, it was, you know, just growing and growing in number and, and reach. And, and we really, we prayed about it and we felt God call us to, to grow and expand to other chapters. And so we did, and, and we kept going on a volunteer basis, but then at that tipping point, we had a few courageous souls, um, Brad Endress, Alex Susie, Bonnie Shrubus, and now Katie Purple, this 
uh, recently this summer who are now all full-time staff for Crossroads for Christ. We have four full-time staff members, a board of directors. We are a nonprofit organization as a year and a half ago, oh. and we are just kind of poised to just continue to grow uh, organizationally as well. Oh, praise be to God. Um, so obviously you're, you're talking about this tipping point, right? You have this, uh, you know, this leadership board, it's becoming a full-time job. So what is it that you guys are doing that's different than just uh, a normal young adult group? Like what's, what are you doing that's separate from just a social group or just a group that has, organizes holy hours? Like how are you forming these intentional communities like in this intentional way? Yeah, Peter, that, that's that's honestly, it's a really excellent question. That's the one we were asking ourselves at that tipping mm -hmm. point is, was this just a, a beautiful thing, like a grace that God gave to us and it was for that purpose? Or was this something that he was calling uh, for more than that? And I think um, one thing that we keep coming back to is like, is that initiative of grace, mm -hmm. that it's not like what we're doing where we receive this blessing, it's God blesses it. And so we felt his hand on crosses for Christ and his blessing there and this grace this, this charism, like small C, like this, mm -hmm. this grace that he'd given and, and how, how could we give and pass on what we had received? And, and we, we challenge us to ask those questions. What is unique about this? Like, what is unique about C4C? Like, why is it good that it continues and blesses others? And I think that, um, to keep it kind of concise, this is, um, so we could dive a lot into, but we really center. So Eucharist friendship and mission, mm -hmm are kind of three things that we really, we come back to often. And what we see in, in young adult groups is the potential for those groups to be, I mean, great groups, but again, mm -hmm. either an intellectual focus, a social focus, or existing maybe for, for a time um, if to, to serve the, the people who are coming. Mm -hmm. What we see with Crossroads for Christ is an opportunity to grow a lot more in depth and breadth. So to really have impact in people's prayer life in their quality of relationship with their peers, their family, their coworkers, their friends, and their ability to evangelize and to become missionary disciples. And we see those three things really having impact in their time as young adults so that throughout the course of their life, they're growing steadily in their prayer life, in their relationships, and in their uh, yes and willingness to evangelize. And so we, we felt that if we could really uh, create an environment where these chapters, these cross for Christ chapters could grow and flourish, mm -hmm. where young adults could not only become a little bit more active in their faith, but really become missionary disciples. I mean, that has the potential to really transform the local church and, and really reinvigorate the, the life of the church. Uh, in, a, in a in a more whole and kind of big picture way, right, right. So That's tell me tell me more about that that missionary disciple like model. I think some of our listeners might be familiar with it through things like Focus. Um, I know they talked about being missionary disciples um, on college campuses. So just for those who are unfamiliar, what does that what does that mean? Heck, for me, I'm not, I'm only marginally familiar. Tell me what that means. Sure. <laughs> What's that model I'm, look like? I'm, I'm, I'm happy to. And I'm also like the caveat, I'm very much still learning a ton mm -hmm. myself. And we as C4C, we are 100% learning a lot as we just kind of go through it. Mm -hmm. um, what I've learned so far is we, we take that from the joy of the gospel. Um, as Pope Francis really popularized the term, obviously, disciple and missionary have been terms we've used in the church for mm -hmm. many, many years. But he's popularized, I think, this term missionary disciple. And he defines it in the joy of the gospel as in virtue of our baptism, all believers, all of us as Catholics are called to become missionary disciples. And I, and he gives some examples of those in the gospel who encounter Christ mm -hmm. and immediately upon encountering him and really experiencing his love, go out then to bring others to that same reality. And so he, this is his vision. This is who we are as Christians. And so in some ways, the term is very simple. You know, a disciple is one who is intentionally deciding to follow Christ, and a missionary is one who brings Christ's love to bear into the world and brings others to meet Christ. Um, so the, I think it's a very simple term in many ways. There's a lot of, um, I guess, nuance as far as how does that be applied? What does that mean? How do you help people mm -hmm. in that growth of becoming a missionary disciple? Um, for us, how we see in many ways is if you have a young adult who's having Christ be at the center of their life, especially sacramentally in the Eucharist, falling in love with, with, with him there. And if you give that young adult 
environment that they can grow in friendship with those around them and be supported in their faith, then you set them up like in an excellent way to then go out and evangelize. And that might be, that potentially is a category where it's maybe most daunting for some young adults is, you know, what does that mean? But when you have friends who are doing it with you and encouraging you, and when you're learning together at that process, it's not so daunting to then bring up Christ in the workplace or to speak at a family function or gathering um, to, to share the gospel a little bit. And so I think that it's, it's all of that kind of together is it's being a disciple and then taking that on mission in your, in your life. That's great. So as you've grown from just that small community into this full fledged apostolate, right? What's your, what's your reach now? Like roughly how many people do you have coming to these meetings as part of these communities? Mm. Well, we have uh, chapters in five locations in Connecticut. Uh, we're in Stanford and New Haven, Watertown, and Mystic, and then in, in the greater Hartford area. So we're kind of local in Connecticut, but over the course of these almost now five years, we've uh, trained, I would say, about uh, 40 leaders. Um, we have reached, I would say, now at this point, hundreds, I'd say well over three, 400 young adults if you include all those who have attended a, a, a night, who mm -hmm. come regularly, those who've gone to some of the retreats that we've done. And if you look at the conference that we just did virtually uh, this past May, we had uh, a thousand people, well over a thousand people be a part of our virtual conference. And there was representation from all over the US and actually in different countries around the world. And so we're seeing our reach and our scope continue to grow. I would say at this point, uh, well, actually maybe pre-COVID, we had anywhere from like 100 to 125 people regularly gathering as active regular members any given week if you combine the five chapters. And it all started with a couple of texts from you and a buddy to a few of your friends. Hey, let's go to church on a random weeknight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's great. Now, I want to circle back just one minute, not to reverse too much, but you mentioned that you first met on October 1st. And yeah. I can't help but think that's the, the Feast of St. Therese of Lisieux. Um, I remember hearing from you once that St. That Therese was kind of present in this ministry. Um, could you just speak a little bit more about that or any other saints or any other places of inspiration or places of help that you've, you've had? Any, uh, any other patrons or patronesses or devotions that you guys have fostered as a community? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have a strong devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You know, we, we believe this is, this is Mary's gift uh, to us in a way, and we have a strong devotion to her Immaculate Heart. At the end of every meeting, we, we ask, we invoke her intercession, Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. And yes, we definitely have, uh, St. Therese has, has really uh, walked with us as well. Her little way, the little way of love has been just an inspiration for all of us. We believe what we're doing in many ways, we're trying to live the Christian life together in community with our other young adults, we're learning how to love ultimately. And she is such a patroness of the small way of little acts, small things with great love. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely look to her patronage. John Paul II has been one who I know many young adults have been inspired by. He's definitely inspired us. We do every week in our gathering, our C4C night, we have the four pillars and we take that from his four pillars of formation in an encyclical letter he wrote mm -hmm. that described different areas of human, intellectual, spiritual, and pastoral formation, which that pastoral for us is relational. Mm -hmm. And so St. Therese and St. John Paul and the Immaculate Heart of Mary have all been just really strong devotions for us. So Travis, as you strive to bring others to Christ and bring others who will then grow and bring others to Christ, um, what particular challenges do you have, say, in today's day and age, or just what particular challenges have you sort of been trying to meet and overcome as you uh, walk this path with Crossroads? Hmm. One particular challenge I would say is is young adults need need to be believed in and empowered, and you're really given an opportunity to grow in their faith and to really do that for others. And I think oftentimes young adults haven't really been given that opportunity. Um, it can be easy to see our young adult population in the church as just a group that we see as potentially drifting away, that we're trying to make sure that that doesn't do that. But really, there are so many young adults who are on fire, but just haven't really been given the opportunity. And so with Crosses for Christ, our, our goal is, is to welcome young adults in, 
to receive them, to equip them, but to very quickly, like to really empower them. And we do that by inviting them to help us to, to lead nights. We give opportunities for young adults to grow in leadership, to be on, we call the servant team. Mm -hmm. Every chapter has a, a leadership team that we call the servant team. And so just by providing an opportunity for young adults to have a role, a place where they're helping to lead their peers and helping to grow and what it means to share their faith, like th this starts to just to click. And I think oftentimes that they just haven't been given the opportunity. So young adults being believed in is one thing. Um, I think on, on kind of maybe a larger level, the young mm -hmm. adult landscape, some challenges that we see, I, I alluded to before, the world we live in can be obviously a little crazy. And there's a lot of, of, of issues of anxiety and fear. And I think it can really uh, cause us to not be open. Mm -hmm. And Cross of Christ allows for this environment where we can start to open our hearts more to the love of God and the love of others. And it then starts to, some of those wounds that we may have experienced in our past can start to be healed. And so all of us are, are wounded in, in different ways and allowing opportunity for those wounds to come up can be really challenging, but really a beautiful thing to invite God to heal, heal our wounds. So I, I think some of the challenges are, are um, really as a church, really believing in our young adults. Uh, but then as a young adult landscape, thinking about that, it's really a lot of the, the issues that surround this, uh, just the fear, the anxiety and the wounds that we have, but how much that is also an opportunity when that's met in love. Uh, the thing that just strikes me about everything you just said is that it it's almost a microcosm of the Christian life. It's a microcosm of the gospel of this. We need to empower young adults, right? In, in the sense of, you know, that, you know, the Christian life is one where you are living as a child of God in all of the the beauty and the power and the, the truth and the goodness of that while simultaneously being incredibly aware of your own brokenness and yeah. being incredibly humble and humbled, letting yourself be humbled by Christ, which is not pleasant. And so it just strikes me how you mentioned, you know, we need to show them the, the beauty of, of God and show them the, the beauty and, and bring them aboard, right? And believe in them and trust them. And, and you know, trust our brothers and sisters, trust our servant team, tr trust the people who walk in the door, while also giving them a space to heal and to be honest and broken. Um, and that's it. And that's 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 so good because it's I've noticed that's something that's so missing often in in different programs, especially ones that are geared towards younger audiences. Sometimes it's it can sometimes feel like pandering rather than honesty mm -hmm. and being honest about the Christian life. So. That's beautiful. God be praised and power to you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thanks, Peter. So I want to ask you a little bit more about you in particular and, and your story. Um, so like, what's, what's your background? How did you come into your faith? How did you wind up where you are now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely by God's grace. Um, so I grew up, I'm, I'm one of four. Uh, I grew up in actually Columbia, uh, Connecticut, uh, where my dad's physical therapy practice is and where the group first started to meet. Uh, I went to school for physical therapy. Mm -hmm. I graduated in 2014 with my physical therapy degree mm -hmm. and I've been working as a physical therapist for five years. I got married last year. Uh, praise God. We have a daughter. She's six weeks old. Her name is Kiara. My wife's name is Santina. And I live now in South Windsor mm -hmm. uh, here. I'm 30 years old and I'm just so happy with how God is. Yeah. He's just so good. Um, every juncture. Um, as far as my faith journey, um, mm -hmm. that has just had, like we all, you know, just a beautiful tapestry. Um, one, I guess, big part of my faith journey is I discerned a call to the priesthood for several years, uh, seriously in college. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, kind of growing up, I had always had, I'd always had strong Christian community. I'd always known that. So my dad's physical therapy clinic is a faith-based clinic. And so I'd always known that in the, in the practice, I had a great uh, community in high school. And then in college, we had an awesome campus ministry and then allowed for me to really dive deeper in my faith. In college, I started to attend daily mass, which rocked my world. And then I also started to just get uh, closer with those in campus ministry, develop really strong mm -hmm. friendships. And that allowed for this kind of this uh, openness to discern a call to the priesthood, which I did for a number of years. And there's a time where I really thought that God was calling me to be a priest. I was discerning with the Dominicans for, mm -hmm. for a number of years as well. 
And after I'd graduated, started working at Crossroads. And during that time, the Lord invited me to be open to marriage and family life. And I've been discerning for like eight or nine years at this point. So I'd like no idea what that even looked like, but I'm like, all right, Lord, I will, I'll be open. And, and, and honestly, that was a difficult time for me. I'd, I'd really put in a lot in that identity as I thought I was going to be a priest yeah. and the time of like really searching um, and really just feeling some of that own weight of just loneliness and sense of like, where do I belong? What's my mission? What's my direction? If it's not this. And I was really crying out a lot during that time in my life as my practice for one year of doing physical therapy and it was right before Crosses for Christ began. I was really crying out to God. I'm like, Lord, I, I really need you. I need some direction. Um, and I'm looking for you. And it was for me, it was actually in that place in my life where God brought the gift of Crosses for Christ. So I have always seen myself personally as one of the one of the main receivers of this grace um, that God has given. And and I've been so incredibly blessed. And actually, my my wife and I met just months into the group starting. Um mm-hmm. And started dating. So, you know, God has really blessed me tremendously through C4C. And I love being a husband and a father. It's as I'm living this vocation, I'm realizing this is totally what God has made me for. And um, yeah, my prayer is that many others can have a, a similar experience that I've had with C4C of just really being blessed in their vocation where, wherever, you know, God is leading. Yeah. And again, it's, it's goes to the question of purpose, right? Which I mean, so many young adults have, like, what is my purpose, right? And even if we hear the catechism, oh, you know, we're supposed to know, love, and serve God so we can be with God in, in the next, sorry, I'm a millennial, so I don't know the Baltimore catechism word for word like my parents do. But, you know, we, we, we hear that, but okay, what about like my individual life? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to, supposed to go to seminary? Am I supposed to enter religious life? Am I supposed to get married? If so, to who, when, how, right? We all have these huge questions. And I, I think that you're, story is just proof that the answer is Christ. The answer is Christ. That when you, when you go to Christ, when you cry out to God, when you go to the Eucharist, when you meet our Lord, he will show you. Like he will show you all of those yeah. particulars. Um, Amen. And just, if I could add <laughs> yeah, one please, piece to that, please. Too, like, I, I know that, um, you know, we hear some of those like, that buzzword of, you know, my, you know, personal encounter with mm-hmm. personal relationship with Christ. And sometimes it can kind of lose its, its sense of meaning. We can, when we, when we do hear it often, but I mean, I can, I can definitively say kind of response to what you were sharing now, it, it really is out of that relationship that, you know, our life takes on a, the meaning, yeah. like the joy, the peace, everything that we're really looking for. I mean, that truly is, is it. Mm-hmm. And I, I know for me, it's, it, my whole life, but especially like around those college years and things when, when I really start like in the quiet of my heart in, in that personal deep interior place, when you really are getting to know, and I got to really know Christ, like things start to really just change in a way that yeah, it's, it's Pope Francis says like life is better with Christ. Yeah. It just is period. And um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of draw emphasis on that and affirm that. That's great. So you've mentioned a few times now, the physical therapy, um, how your father was a physical therapist. It was a, a faith-based practice. You practice it now. What, how has that background, how has that training kind of equipped you for this apostolate? You know, has that borne fruit in, in your work? Yeah. So at Crossroads, we do a special kind of, of work. It's all hands-on manual therapy. We have a holistic approach. Mm-hmm. Like I mentioned, it's a faith-based clinic that my dad started about 20 years ago. And the goal was to be able to really serve patients holistically, to be able to love them where they're at and walk with them and facilitate the healing process. And through my years as a physical therapist, I've really come to appreciate how God walks so individually and uniquely with each each of us and how he heals us in, in, in very uh, beautiful ways. Some is very small and subtle. Some is not so small and subtle. <laughs> just how unique each of our journey is. And I think that reverence for, for each person's story, mm-hmm. um, ha- for me has really helped to play a big role in C4C as we you know, do our best. Every person who walks through those doors, we recognize that, that they're bearing the image and likeness of God and that they, they're bringing their story, which is worth listening to and worth really encountering Christ in. And, you know, for me as a physical therapist, I'm working with people on a very individual basis and I get to really hear and enter into, uh, 
some of, of their, some of what they're really going through, some of their real healing, the real brokenness. Yeah, you enter into their pain and, physically. Yeah. Like, you're, totally. yeah, you're there with them through it. Totally. Yeah. Yes. And like learning what it means to accompany someone over the course of time, to walk with them over the course of time. And that's really, I think, influenced me in a big way when looking at Crosses for Christ. We're in this for the long haul. Like we're, we're really, we're made to accompany each other in the ups and the downs, in the highs and the lows, not just, oh, these are my Catholic friends I do Catholic things with, but no, no, we're in our humanity, in our messy humanity. And it helps to really uh, make it uh, real and and being real is 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 critical at all times but especially with young adults you got to be real and i think it's helped me to, to really enter into that space and really want to promote that for others gotcha so as so you started meeting at the this clinic right which is called crossroads but eventually you found found this group called crossroads for christ correct yeah. so just clarify that <laughs> yeah. um and then so as as it grew um and it went from one chapter into now what five chapters and you are bringing people on full time. Um, what have some of the surprises been? I mean, maybe you're surprised that it, it, it happened at all and it grew the way it did, but beyond that sort of along the way, what, how was the Holy spirit surprised you, right? How anything unexpected happen? Um, yeah, well, um, <laughs> meeting my wife was definitely uh, course, yeah. uh, unexpected. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I, I mean, there's been surprises every turn. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I, we definitely did not know it was going to go more than one chapter, mm -hmm. you know, and then when it started to, to grow beyond that, we didn't know we'd become a nonprofit and we didn't know that we would have people who would be able to answer this call to go full time and for it to grow the way that it has. I mean, it definitely has been one of the biggest surprises. I think one, one of the, one of a very beautiful surprise has been, and then we're just starting to see this, but you know, those who have really been formed in, in these past few years in C4C, but have now gone beyond that. E either they're, they're living their vocation full-time, mm -hmm. priest religious, or in marriage, and maybe not attending meetings as regularly as involved. Like the friendships, the prayer life, like things can, are continuing. And that was the prayer all along, was that, that what was happening would go well beyond like C4C as an organization. Right, it's, it's the and means, been, not the end. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so that's been... A real grace to see that. Beautiful. Um, is is there anything in particular, any particular story that's like really touched your heart that you just want to you want to share? Any any stories of glory or, or grace that you want to sort of just send out to the airwaves? What not a specific story, but one thing I would love to mm -hmm. share is just. Um, I mean, I could truly say that some of my best friends now are those that I've gotten to share this with. Like mission facilitates friendship, and friendship facilitates mission. And there is a joy in just getting to really be on mission and share the gospel like no other. And that's been one of the most surprising and just wonderful gifts uh, to receive. That's great. So you've got these people, like you said, who have bravely sort of made the jump to go full time um, and, and carry this apostolate into these, in these other cities. Um, how are you supporting your team? How are you making this work? Yeah. So that's something that when we were looking at going full time, we really had mm -hmm. to look at it as if it was going to be a ministry where we could really reach as far as we felt called to reach. We would have to go full time. We would have to be a fully functioning nonprofit and, and get funding. And we prayed a lot about this and had looked at other apostles and organizations doing some similar work. And the Lord led us to uh, just this. I mean, really, what's been an incredible part of this whole thing which is the reality of mission partners, where people who might not be able to do what we're doing, but feel very strongly, sometimes uh, more strongly even you know, than we do about young adult ministry mm -hmm. and seeing young adults not only come back to the church, but be missionary disciples in the church, how people are looking and wanting to support this, things like this. And so we've looked to connect with um, those people. People who are passionate about young adults, encountering Christ and who want to support that financially. And so we now have this kind of whole network of mission partners who are beginning to really support us, help us to grow, help us to reach other young adults. It's been beautiful. It's been this past year that we've experienced this and it would have not been the case if we were not a nonprofit. We have right. loved getting to meet our mission partners and we, we absolutely feel that they are kind of uh, shoulder to shoulder with us on the front lines and really making this happen. 
That's, that's beautiful. So you're basically, you're partnering with, with people, I, I assume mostly in, in the Connecticut area, um, but maybe maybe more broadly, right? But they're excited about the mission and they're they're trying to contribute so that we can really build up the church, right? You got it. Yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of people in Connecticut, but we've actually even even well well beyond. Um, there are people who are uh, who've just heard about what we're doing and in the New England area and even beyond who are who are supporting us. That's great. Now, now in a minute, I'm going to ask you if there's any way our, our listeners can support you. But before I do that, let's just let's pretend for a minute that you money was no object. Money was no obstacle, right? Just a, a, a miracle donor flew in and gave you I don't know half a million dollars, million dollars, whatever it is. What would you guys do? Like, how would you expand? What would what would you do with that money? Hmm. The the first thing I would think of is to have a C four C chapter, at least one in every in every diocese in the country, if not several. Mm-hmm. I honestly just look at my own experience and some of 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 us in the leadership team, some of my best friends these past few years. Our lives have been transformed. There's no other way to say it through this grace of C four C. And I, personally, I want every young adult to be able to experience what I, the gift that God has given me. And so if we had a, <laughs> unlimited resources, I, I would love to see a C4C chapter, at least one in every diocese in the country, which takes a lot of formation <laughs> right. of our leaders, takes a lot of, uh, you know, kind of uh, the curriculum and all the ways to get there for each chapter, all the support, the ongoing support mm-hmm. takes a lot. But that's our dream. You know, we have a, our dream is to see these chapters be all across the country. That's great. And like I said at the top, like what you're doing is, I think, so necessary for for young adults, right? Because you're so many of us are, are have positive experiences, maybe in our childhood as Catholics, or a lot of us are converting or reverting in high school, in college. And then there's not a lot out there after that, right? There, are, I mean, there are parishes that obviously there are churches out there. But there's, there's a lot of people, I think, out there looking for something just like this, an intentional community where you're open and honest with each other, where you center Christ, where you center the Eucharist, um, and really build each other up in love. Um, and I think there's so many people just hungering, hungering, hungry for that. Um, so my question to you, right? So maybe we have listeners out there and they're out in in Chicago, they're out in Houston, they're out in in one of these cities um, that you are not in, right? If you're in Connecticut, great. Go check out Crossroads for Christ. (laughs) Check them out. But if you're not, and you're you're hungering for something like this, well, my challenge to you is that maybe God is calling you to take that first step, right? Maybe God is calling you to be the one to go out and do that. Um, So Travis, if someone came to you and said, hey, I don't live in Connecticut. I live in LA, but I want to do what you're, you're doing. I want to start something like what you guys have done over on the East Coast. What would you tell them? Hmm. What advice would you give them? Number one, I would just, I would say, I would say kind of go for it. I would say if the Lord is calling you, that's the number one and most important thing that you need. And in many ways, it's all that you need because he will make a way for you. So my first uh, thing I would say is, is go for it. If you feel the call of God in your heart, go. Uh, do not delay. I would say in terms of crosses for Christ, we want to support you. Whether that means you becoming a chapter one day or whether it means us just supporting you on that journey, Crosses for Christ exists to serve. We're here to serve uh, young adults. And so if you are interested in anything like we're doing or starting an actual chapter of C4C, we would love to talk with you and we'd love for you to reach out. We want to be here for you, pray for you and with you and uh, be a source of encouragement for you. Great. So where can people find you? If they're like, all right, I want to reach out. Where, where can they find you? Sure. So you can go onto our website. It's crossroadsforchrist.org. It's F-O-R, crossroadsforchrist.org. And you can just reach out. There's a link that's there to contact us. And one of our one of our team, our four person team, will reach out and connect with you. We would love to connect with you. Any questions you have about starting a chapter, if you want to be a mission partner, anything, or just want more information, we would mm-hmm. love to connect with you. Great, and we will link all of that in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, just look down below this video, and we will have those links provided for you there. Um, now, what if? Uh, 
our listeners are listening to this and maybe they're not young adults, maybe they don't want to start something like this, but they want to support you, right? And they're, and they're thinking, man, this sounds good and we need young adults in the church or there won't be a church. Um, how could they support you? How could they reach out? What, what do you guys need? Hmm. I would say the biggest thing that we need now is, is people who are committed on this journey with us. And I do not just mean financially. And that's why when we talk about our mission partners, we really think about in this kind of full breadth of Mm -hmm. with us, you know, in prayer with us in really connecting with the different events and things we're doing throughout the year with us in communication and support and also with us financially as well. I mean, we definitely need funding. We can't do what we do if we don't have the funding for it. And so if you feel called to support us in any way, we would love to talk with you. We'd love for you to consider being a mission partner. And that looks different for every person. And, and I would definitely want to connect, have one of our team connect with you directly uh, to see uh, how God might be calling or inspiring you to, to support us in any way. All right, everyone. Well, that's about all the time we have today. I just want to give a big thank you to Travis Moran for joining us today. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Crossroads for Christ, whether to uh, join them in their mission or just learn more about it or try to do something similar in your own community, go to their website. We'll put links in the descriptions of the podcast up on YouTube. Um, And you can also find them on Instagram at crossroads.for.christ. And I really want to just encourage all of our listeners to prayerfully consider donating, whether just as a one-time donor or to really reach out and become a mission partner and join them in their work. I really believe God is doing good things in Connecticut and Crossroads Apostolate is so, so needed right now. So you'll really be helping with a promising and exciting movement where, where God is working. I, I have full confidence, full confidence in that. So Travis, just thank you once again for joining us. You're welcome, Peter. Thanks for the opportunity. All right, everyone, that's all the time we've got for today. So uh, we're going to sign off. But uh, hey, if you like the podcast, feel free to please subscribe to us on YouTube, subscribe to the podcast in whether it's Apple Podcasts or Google Play or wherever it is you're listening. Um, You can find out uh, more of what we're doing at Good Catholic at goodcatholic.com. God bless.